Field Notes 12, 3, 20, 21. The rebellion plot is going forward, though we've had to leave encoded messages outside in the yellow snow. Not sure if the field director is onto us or not, but he did question the other day if animals could pee in Morse code. Hello, my church shirts and shards, and welcome to a Dirtmas Christmas bedtime story. And tonight, before we get too far into it, I want to make sure that everybody is aware that there is a content warning on this one, because of course, what makes a better bedtime story than human sacrifice? So today we're going to be talking about the once highly celebrated Christmas tradition of the Lord of Misrule, aka the Abbot of, what was his name? The Abbot of Unreason. And both of these individuals, the Lord of Misrule is probably better known because he had the cooler name. But it's the same concept of elevating an individual of the lower class up to the higher class, basically making him a king for the day and giving him rule over the court for the day. And the day would, of course, or the time period that this person would be ruling was, of course, around the Christmas or the midwinter time. Cats because this is a time of the year for celebration. A lot of people forget that before Christmas was tamed, is a good way of putting it, uh, Christmas was a time of basically debauchery, drunken rival revelry out in the streets, getting to know your neighbor <laughs> kind of stuff, feasting and having a good time. We still do some of that today, but it's very toned down and it's very Christianized. Um, People forget sometimes, too, that Christmas itself, the celebration of Christmas, was actually outlawed by the Christian church. And it was outlawed for a long time because of these wild celebrations people would have around the Christmas time. So the Lord of Misrule, being one of those traditions, was also banned by the church. And when the Christmas revival came back around the Lord of Misrule or the Abbot of Reason just didn't pick up again. And I guess that's because around the time of the Victorian era, basically, we didn't really have that kind of stuff anymore. So this is a very much a, I think it kind of vanished around the medieval era. So we don't really have any evidence of this being practiced anywhere after that. I'm sure, I'm sure there are still local practices of this. Uh, the king cake that people have occasionally throughout the year is kind of a callback to that. If you've never had a king cake, you um, it's usually around Mardi Gras that I see them. And they're, they're cakes that are baked with little charms inside of them. And if you get the right charm, you're the lucky winner for the day or for the year. And that kind of is a callback to how the Lord of Misrule was selected. There were special cakes that were made with charms on them. And if you didn't choke to death on the charm, you got to be king for the day. <laughs> now, of course, since all things go wrong in the Victorian era, um, there was a Victorian anthropologist by the name of James G. Fraser who was fascinated with the concept of the Lord of Misrule. I have notes in case you see me looking over here. And... Mr. Fraser had to take it to the next level. It couldn't just be that this was a class reversal celebration, just, you know, a breaking of the norms or just a fun thing to do for the day. It couldn't just be that for Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser had to take it to the next level and say that this individual, this Lord of Misrule, this king for the day, had a darker purpose, especially back in the pagan era of Europe. And that darker purpose was this person was meant to die. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to be good natured about this because it is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, the concept of human sacrifice in the past. It seems to be, it seems to always be regulated to the pagan, the pagan past, the 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 past that is only documented by white victorian anthropologists and archaeologists it always seems to be something of a finger to point at other people who were non-christian and basically non-white europeans at the time 
and that's my thing with it. Like, there's usually not a whole lot of evidence to support these concepts, these ideas, and this idea of the Lord of Misrule being a holdover of a more ancient pagan practice of killing a king, a sacred king, um, falls into that category. So Mr. Fraser tries to connect the concept of the Lord of Misrule with the practice of the Roman practice of the Santronella. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. Where an individual was chosen to represent the god Saturn for a day. And Fraser likes to say that at the end of this person's rule as the god of, well, the god Saturn, that the person was then sacrificed as the god Saturn to the god Saturn. So we're looking at like a renewal idea. Now, this concept of death and renewal is not an unusual one that we see, especially in European mythology, older European mythology, pagan European mythology. It's, it's, a, it's a common theme, but you also see it in pretty much every culture, this concept of, you know, life follows death and death is part of life. And therefore, you know, it's just the natural cycle of things. It, it personally, I don't think it's until we got into like the modern era when we like became separated from our dead that we started kind of fearing the concept of death. I mean, I'm sure nobody was like, Oh yeah, sign me up. But my point is, is like, we kind of have a fear of it. It's mystical to us because we don't understand it in a day to day way like our ancestors used to because they were living with it on a day-to-day -day basis like if you lived to uh if you made it to 40 you were probably solid but you had to get to 40 first <laughs> so fraser says that this lord of misrule is a, a holdover to this concept of the sacred king that needed to be killed at the beginning of every year so that the next year would be fruitful and prosperous for everyone involved why does Fraser think this? Well, I don't know. And no one else can really seem to piece it together. Fraser went out on a limb, like way out on a limb, to try to connect a bunch of unrelated things together, much like we see pseudo-archaeologists in the fringe do today, in order to build his argument that human sacrifice was a routine part of pagan Europe. Now, whether it was or wasn't is another episode. Um, but the things that Fraser was quoting and citing as being part of this, this holy king, this is uh, the sacrifice of a holy king, the sacred king killing, there's no evidence of this either of these old rituals either A, ending in the death of the individual or be ever leading up to even a symbolic death of the individual. However, in the Victorian era, when Fraser published his stuff, yes, he had criticism because almost everyone is criticized when they first publish something, but Fraser's stuff really caught on. And not only did it catch on, it got to be really popular and it got ingrained into these ideas of pagan Europe and pagan European practices. And so for a real long time, people actually, academic people actually kind of thought that this was true. And it wasn't until we kind of got into a more critical era of uh, history, uh, yeah, history and anthropology that people really started kind of critically looking at Fraser's concept of the killing of the sacred king and then looking at the archaeological evidence and the historical evidence, because Fraser did try to quote several documents that don't actually hold up. And so what was found out was that a lot of the, well, pretty much everything that Fraser was quoting was either talking about something unrelated to Fraser's idea of the, the killing of a sacred king, or it didn't support it didn't support at all his concept of the killing of the sacred king one of the things fraser argued was that the 
ideal time for the sacrifice of the sacred king would have been during the spring which since he's keep in mind he's trying to connect this sacrifice with the roman practice of the saturnella again sorry can't say it right and the dates for that particular roman celebration are solidly recorded as being in december so this holiday this celebration that he desperately needs to support his theory of the death of a king of this sacred king they are very much in the wrong time period for him so fraser kind of had to ignore that and he did again this is a trick that we see done this is a trick that we see carry over into the modern era with a lot of uh pseudo archaeology and fringe archaeology so again the victorians ruin everything another document that fraser uses to support his idea of this killing of a sacred king is um a document by the name of the acts of saint dacius really hope i'm pronouncing that one correctly so the acts of saint dacius recount the um the story of dacius who was who was a roman soldier see if i can get this one right he was a roman soldier who was selected by his pagan counterparts to be the representative of saturn for that year and since dacius was a christian dacius said no that's a pagan practice i can't participate in it sorry and so his fellow soldiers insulted by him turning it down slaughtered him immediately as you do it's pretty much the only way you could become a saint back in the day so this doesn't hold up with fraser's idea either because dacius would have been sacrificed then before his reign if he had accepted it even began so even though he's trying to use dacius as an example of a documented um sacrifice of the sacred king dacius was never king to be sacrificed and he certainly never ruled for his allotted time to be sacrificed in the spring so the only correlation between fraser's idea that the the cel the roman celebration would end with the death of a sacred king was dacius and of course dacius I mean, the only the only correlation between the two is that Dacius died. Dacius was never king in the story. He never ruled in the story. He didn't participate in the celebration in the story. Actually, the story is about how Dacius turned it down because of his Christian faith and was then martyred instead. So completely different thing. But Fraser needed this as well as the dates that don't line up. <laughs> in order to support his idea of this death of a sacred king or this practice of the killing of a sacred king so with both of these documents these major documents basically saying no these aren't right uh he just kind of like wrote around it quoting it mentioning it briefly and then just kind of like going on anyway again another practice that we see with the modern fringe um and then he wrote a series of books that many of you may know as uh, The Golden Bough. Again, these sacrificial actions, these sacrificial uh, rituals are being associated with a pagan past. And then you get to the idea that most religion, most pagan religions, especially pagan European pagan religions that are alive and well today, are recreations of an idea of a past that may or may not have existed which again is a story for another time and maybe we'll get into it uh this dirt mess but the golden bow is a series of books that i am aware that are very that have been very influential in the past in pagan traditions i'm not entirely sure how influential they are today because most of the pagan groups and the pagan individuals that i talk to and, and interact with 
um, are very aware of the fact that the roots of their religion are based on ideas that may or may not be supported by history and by archaeology and by anthropology. And a lot of them are trying to kind of streamline, kind of trying to like figure it out, or they're fully accepting of the fact that their religion is actually a modern religion that is loosely based on pagan ideas or fanciful ideas of the pagan past, I guess is the best way to put it. And that brings us back to the Lord of Misrule. The Lord of Misrule is actually documented. This, this concept of a person being elevated to the position of king for the day. There's no evidence that this person was ever put to death at the end of his rule. And there's no evidence that there's any connection between the Lord of Misrule and the Roman practice during midwinter of, uh, I'm going to butcher it again, but Saturnilla. So there's, there's no connectors here, but Frazier influenced this idea for such a long time, starting in the Victorian era and coming up into the modern era, that you're still going to see echoes of it every now and then. And you probably have read an article even today that gets passed around on the internet telling you that the old practice of the Lord of Misrule actually goes back to the pagan practice of human sacrifice, which it does not. And that, my little ones, is your bedtime story for this dirt must. May visions of sugar plums dance in your head as you go to bed. And I will see you in the next video. Please remember to like and subscribe and Merry Dirtmas. Hello.